All right, guys, so today I'm going to give you five easy ways to make the EVH Iconic crush. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make both channels sound their best. And what I'm looking for here are the most aggressive, nasty, biggest, fattest, chunkiest, crunchiest sounds I can get out of both of the channels on this amp. So let's start with tip number one, crank the gain. On channel one, you wanna crank the gain all the way up. That's gonna get you the fullest, meanest, nastiest, most aggressive sound on that channel. Now, I know that goes against conventional wisdom uh, amongst a lot of you. Well, you don't crank the gain all the way up. Well, it depends on the amp. It depends on the amp and it depends on how the gain is structured, how many gain stages there are, and how the tolerance is on the gain knob. Every amp's got a different level of tolerance and a different amount of headroom on all of the knobs on the amplifier. Not just the gain knob, but all of the knobs. So you really can't put all of the knobs on all of the amps under the same umbrella. They are all very different, and all the amp builders do that for a reason. So on this particular amplifier, on channel one, you want to crank the gain all the way up. Now it's not uncommon to crank the gain all the way up on certain channels on different amplifiers. I mean, for instance, on my Herbert Mark III, channel two, gains cranked all the way up. Same with the uh, Badlander and channel two on my Ingle Savage. And that's just to name a few. So what that's gonna do for you is it's gonna give you a fuller sound and more aggression and a better feel. Don't believe me? All right, so let's go ahead and turn the gain down to what a lot of people would consider a good setting, right? Let's just set the gain at noon on channel one on the Iconic. All right, let's see what it sounds like. All right, that sounds pretty good, right? So let's go ahead and see if we could push it further and just get a little better feel out of it and maybe a little more aggression and attack. Sounds freaking phenomenal. I love how it feels and how it sounds. So I don't know if you noticed it, but it filled in a little bit more and it also sounded more aggressive. And that's really what we're going for here. We were trying to make this amplifier sound as full, bombastic and aggressive as we can. And the feel does enhance a little as you turn it up. So basically with channel one, all of the gain is usable. So if you want the most nasty sound out of this amplifier on channel one, crank the gain all the way up. And just as an aside, I have the gain on channel two at one o'clock or number six. So it's not cranked all the way up on channel two. All right, so tip number two, boost it. I know what some of you are thinking, well, if you have enough gain, you don't need to boost your amplifier. Unless you're playing little girly wrist with little girly arms, you need to boost the amp, sissy. Now the thing is, let me just say this once and for all. I say this on my channel all the time. A boost pedal doesn't add more gain to an amplifier, unless, of course, you crank the gain on the boost pedal, but who does that, right? It's only there to shape and sculpt the tone of the amplifier and make it more aggressive and make it more responsive. It just tightens up the low end of the amplifier, and depending on the pedal, it'll add a little texture to the top end, or at least let that texture shine through because there's not all this low end and goop covering it up, okay? And it will just make the amp respond to your playing better, and it feels better to play. You don't have to beat the piss out of your strings to get sounds out of the amplifier. You can have more sustain. The harmonics will not only ping better, but they'll actually sustain better and stand out more. Overdriving the amplifier also gives your notes a lot more clarity, especially if you balance things out with the gain and the overdrive pedal. You might have to spend a few seconds doing that, but it's worth the effort because as soon as you get everything balanced out, the amp becomes a lot more fun to play and actually a lot more inspiring to play as well. 
So we're on channel one right now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the boost pedal off. I'm using the mud killer right now. So pay attention to the screen there. If you don't see the pedal, that means it's off. If you see it, that means it's on. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a quick riff with the pedal off and then I'll engage the pedal and it'll be obvious that the amp sounds more aggressive and on my end, it's definitely gonna feel better as well. Sounds and feels way better with the pedal on. So go ahead and use your pedal. Again, it's not about gain. It's about responsiveness on the amplifier and sculpting your tone and just making the amp sound more aggressive. The reason why I think a lot of people uh, think that it adds gain is because the amp becomes more aggressive and people get fooled by that and they're like, oh, it's got more gain now. No, it doesn't. It's just got more aggression. That's basically what it is. You're pissing your amp off. Now regarding channel two, let's go ahead and switch to that now. And I'm going to turn the mud killer off again. And channel two has a lot more gain, but it doesn't mean it doesn't need an overdrive. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the overdrive pedal off and play a riff and then turn it on. Man, that just sounds nasty. Now keep in mind, I have channel two currently dialed in for leads, so there's a lot of gain in there uh, for what I was doing, but I just wanted to show you that even with the gain that high, an overdrive pedal still benefited the channel. It's not about gain, it's about response and sculpting your tone. All right, so tip number three. What you wanna do on channel one is add just a teeny bit of dirt with your overdrive pedal. Now the reason why I say this is because everybody uses different pickups. These are pretty high output pickups on this guitar, but if you're using a guitar that's got lower output pickups and even a boost pedal is just not giving you what you need, man, I'm telling you, just put the gain up to maybe nine o'clock and it adds just a little bit of dirt from the pedal to the amplifier and it just enhances the feel a lot more, it makes it even more responsive, but not only does it do that, but it actually adds a little bit of aggression and texture on the top end as well. Now, you're not overgaining or oversaturating the amp by doing this. You're just adding a little extra texture. Now, depending on the amplifiers that you're playing through or the pickups that you're using and maybe your taste or <laughs> lack thereof, um, you may or may not find this feature uh, helpful. Now, for me, especially when I'm uh, playing live or even doing something in a full mix when I'm playing live. Uh, what I like is to have as much texture as I can so that by the time my guitar tone is sitting in a mix and maybe the sound is dissipating through a room that I'm playing in, I, I love having that little bit of extra texture just so that the, you know, the aggression doesn't dissipate or dilute out. You're actually gonna get a little extra uh, texture in there and it really does make a difference on your tone and not only for your ears but for your hands as well. So I actually have the gain knob on my mud killer pedal set at nine o'clock right now for channel one on the Iconic. So what I'm going to do is turn it down all the way so the gain is all the way down right now and I'm going to play and reach down and turn it up to nine o'clock again and you're going to hear just a little bit of extra texture coming in there but it's not going to oversaturate the amplifier. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how that sounds now. Thank you. 
All right, so you probably didn't notice a huge difference, but I'm telling you, it adds just that little bit of extra texture. Just try it out and see if it works for you. If it doesn't, it doesn't, but once you get used to how that sounds and feels, I think you're going to get hooked on that setting. Now, again, this is for channel one. You don't really need this for channel two. Channel two's got a little more texture. It's, it's less round than channel one on this amplifier. So channel two's got a lot more, uh, you know, bite to it and aggression and gain. So what I do, since I'm going to share this, you know, pedal and the settings associated with this pedal with both channels, uh, what I would do is turn the gain down a little bit on channel two to accommodate for the extra little bit of dirt that you're putting into the amplifier through the pedal. Just, you know, mess with it and see, uh, you know, how it works for you. Now, while we're talking about the overdrive pedal, what I would recommend also is adjust your tone knob up a little bit. It's going to give you that little extra bite on uh, the amplifier and help your notes stand out more and give you that little extra aggression. You see how all these things that I'm telling you to do just keeps adding more texture and aggression to the amplifier. And you're kind of uh, gain staging, I guess, with the levels of aggression that you're going to add to the amplifier with each one of these tips. But they're all going to add up to making this amp sound as nasty as it can. So right now I actually have the uh, tone knob set at uh, 5 o'clock on the mud killer. Now all pedals are going to vary, so just turn it up incrementally until you find the sweet spot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, tone knob on the mud killer to top dead center, which is where most people keep it. And I'm going to play some riffs and then turn it up and let's hear how much more aggressive the amp gets. It's subtle, but it's noticeable. I mean, I don't know about you, but I heard that. Definitely has more texture and aggression and attack. So it just adds some clarity. So the more attack that you have, within reason, of course, the clearer your uh, palm mutes are going to be or your chugs or whatever you want to call them, that really nice attack on the top end is going to really make uh, the notes stand out better and the separation between your chugs and all that stuff stand out better too. You're actually adding a little extra to the transient that's associated with every time you hit the strings with the pick. Whether it's open chords or chugs, doesn't matter. It adds to that transient and makes things stand out a lot better. All right, let's move on to tip number four. For God's sakes, turn the damn presence knob down. Now, I've seen so many people <laughs> play this amplifier, and when, especially when it first came out, there were guys in stores like, yeah, man, I don't know, it sounds kind of thin and brittle, and they got the presence knob at 3 o'clock. I'm like, what are you doing? Now, to be fair, on certain amplifiers that I even have on the shelves here, the presence knob at 3 o'clock is actually the appropriate setting. Perfect example, the EVH Stealth and the EL34, both of them, on uh, channel two and three, you want the presence knob around three o'clock and it actually makes the amp sound perfect right there. Um, same thing with my uh, Splun. I got the presence knob at, well, I have it at, yeah, three o'clock on my Splun too. So it really depends, but see, that's the thing. We get hooked on like our settings that we've used on previous amps. I mean, we just think, well, well, those will transfer over to this amp and that's just what I've always done. Well, that's what you've always done on those amps. Every amp's different. They're all different. All the tolerances of the knobs are different, and the voicing of the amplifiers are all different. So you can't just copy and paste settings from amp to amp and expect the same results. It just doesn't work that way. So I have the presence on uh, this amplifier at uh, 11 o'clock. I mean, that's as high as you want to go with this. Anything beyond that, it does get shrill and brittle. And that's one of the reasons why I think some people uh, were bad-mouthing this amp when it first came out. They're like, oh, it's so shrill and brittle. Well, yeah, when you set your presence to uh, the staring at the sun uh, you know, setting, I mean, of course you're going to uh, not like how it sounds. I mean, turn the damn knob down. So let's go ahead and turn the knob up to uh, 3 o'clock and see what happens. <laughs> oh 
A moment of silence for everyone who died during my guitar playing and that setting. Okay, so <laughs> that is just horrible. It's shrill, it's nasty, it hurts your ears. It's, there's no, uh, well, there's a low end there, but it's overshadowed by all of the highs and all the ear piercing, horrible needles that are coming out of the amplifier that are sticking into your eardrums. So turn the presence down. Uh, turn it down to what I have it set at is again, four, okay, the number four or 11 o'clock. And that's perfect. It's got plenty of presence. It stands out in the mix just right, but not in bad ways, in good ways. It remains full and aggressive. And some people think, well, you know, I just want that really nice top end and, and that brightness that gives me the aggression. I already showed you how to do that without having to crank the presence up. Use your overdrive pedal for that, and the settings on the overdrive pedal that I showed you will definitely give you that texture and aggression on the top end of the amp without, you know, ruining everybody's hearing when you play your guitar through an amp with a presence knob at 3 o'clock. All right, so here's our final tip, tip number five. Make sure you uh, give this amp plenty of low end, all right? So a lot of us are used to dual racks and maybe the Mark Series amplifiers or other amplifiers where we always kept the base knob at nine o'clock and we never went above that. And uh, you get an amp like this and you're like, well, I'm gonna set the base knob at nine o'clock and then the resonance knob at uh, 12 noon or nine o'clock or whatever, you know, because that's what I've always done with my other amp that I had before this one. Well, you're making the same mistake that you made with the presence knob. Okay, you're copying and pasting settings from another amp that was tubby and gooey and putting them on an amp that's much tighter and voiced in a more modern way. And what's happening is the amp doesn't have any low end now because you sucked all of it out. And you're wondering like, well, you know, what's wrong with my amp? I mean, these settings worked on my other one. Now, let me also add to this by saying, what if you're one of those guys that cranks your presence and lowers the low end on both the bass knob and the resonance knob. Can you imagine how this amp would sound? Don't worry, I'll spare you that. <laughs> That's freaking terrible. So just make sure you turn your bass and resonance knobs up on this amplifier past what you're probably comfortable with. Now I have the uh, bass knob set at uh, six or one o'clock, just past uh, the number six on the dial here. And my resonance knob is in the same spot. Okay, it's just past the number six. So you, it's going to give you that really nice low end and fullness on the amplifier. And that's what we want. So to prove my theory, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the resonance and bass knobs and turn them all the way down to nine o'clock, which is honestly a setting that a lot of people are familiar with, with a lot of different amplifiers out there. And I'll bring them up incrementally until I think they're in their sweet spot, which I know is one o'clock on both of these knobs. And again, we're still in channel one. <laughs> that sounds terrible. It sounds like an AM radio. It really does. There's no fullness at all. So let's go ahead and turn these up now. Sounds much fuller and meaner, and it just has more authority with all the notes and the chugs that I'm playing. So that is the sweet spot on both the resonance and bass knobs on this amplifier. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you got something out of it. And to all my subscribers and Patreon supporters, thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys. And if you haven't subscribed, please do, and click the bell so that you can be notified every time I either go live or come out with a new episode. And if you like what I do here, you know, basically I do amp shootouts, I do dial-ins and tutorials on uh, amplifiers and digital platforms as well. And if you want to support my work, there's a link below to my Patreon. You can support me for any amount of money. I really appreciate that very much. It helps keep the channel going and encourages me to continue doing these videos for you guys. Well, I got a lot of great stuff coming up. I'll see you on the next one.